Hey, what's happening? I'm Claudio, and today I'm going to be finishing up a kitchen table build from last week. If you want to see what I did, stick around. Let's make it now. I found a really cool lumber yard somewhat near my house called Westgate Hardwoods. I was able to pick up some really nice red oak for the tabletop. I laid the boards down and rough cut them using my cordless circular saw. If you put a couple pieces of scrap wood underneath, you won't cut into the board below. The tabletop would only use these five pieces, the rest of the wood is for upcoming projects. Using my tiny joiner, I flattened one side of each piece. At the table saw, I put each newly flattened edge against the fence and ripped them to make two perfectly parallel sides. These boards had already been skip planed at the lumber yard and were already pretty flat. I ran them through my planer to finish the job. I laid the boards down in the orientation that I wanted the finished top to lie, and then marked where the biscuits would go. Using my biscuit joiner, I plunged into each spot there was a line. This doesn't really add strength to the joint, but helps to line everything up during the glue up. I grabbed 8 of my long clamps and prepped everything before pulling out the glue. I had each board numbered so I wouldn't mix them up. I put down a generous amount of glue and then spread it across the entire surface with a piece of scrap wood. I plopped in the biscuits and laid the boards flat onto the clamps. I slowly tightened up each clamp until there was squeeze out in all four joints. Then I grabbed the other four clamps and did the same thing from the top. I also attached a clamp at each joint to try and keep them all flat. My father-in-law helped me remove the clamps. The glue up was a success. The top needed to be cut into a 48 inch circle and I would use a router to get the job done. To make a quick circle jig, I cut a scrap piece of quarter inch plywood into a 3.5 inch strip. I removed the stock router plate and marked the screw holes on my board. I drilled and countersunk so the screw heads wouldn't interfere with the operation. I also marked out the center hole and cut it out using a Forstner bit on the drill press. I attached the jig and swapped the existing bit for a straight bit. I carefully marked out measurements for different circle dimensions. Using a tape measure, I marked out the center of the top. I tacked in a nail at the 24 inch radius mark to the center of the board and started cutting. After double checking that I hadn't made a huge mistake, I continued cutting. I circled the board a bunch of times, slightly lowering the bit with every pass. It's important to keep a consistent speed and downward pressure on the router to make the consistent cuts. Once I had cut down this far, I used my jigsaw to rough cut the rest of the way through. I made sure to stay away from the crisp inside edge. We flipped the board over and using a flush trim bit, I cleaned the remainder of the edge. The bottom bearing rides along the smooth cut edge and matches it to the rough one. Again, keeping a constant speed and pressure makes for a smooth cut. Since I don't own a 50 inch drum sander, it was time to bust out the belt sander for several hours of sanding. I sanded both the top and bottom as well as the edge. Once the top was rough sanded down to 80 grit, I used the router again, this time with a quarter inch round over bit. I tested the bit on a piece of scrap wood before bringing it to the top. I slowly moved around the top, flipping it to get to the other side. This was the beginning of my first big mistake. I used a white, non-stainable epoxy to fill some knots and cracks. I wouldn't know it at the time, but it would come back to haunt me later. I cleaned up all the epoxy and then sanded down to 220 grit with the random orbit sander. We decided to use a dark walnut stain that I applied with a rag. It went on easily enough, but you can already see my blatant mistake. Not knowing any better, I tried to add extra stain to try and make it soak in. Nope, that doesn't work. I re-sanded the entire surface and used some stainable wood filler in its place. I was finally able to get a great looking stain across the entire top. I already had about half a gallon of the spar urethane and decided it would make a good protective finish. I applied an even coat with a brush across the entire surface. Once everything was covered, I went back and made smooth, even strokes going with the grain. This was the bottom and it looked awesome. Major problem number two occurred while finishing the show face of the top. For some reason, when I applied the spar urethane to the top, it bubbled up really bad as it dried. When I tried to sand it smooth with 400 grit paper after it had dried, it just kept making a cloudy white coating. I'm sure those of you who actually know how to properly finish a nice tabletop like this are being thoroughly entertained. 
I ended up having to sand down the entire finish and stain and starting from scratch again. After restaining, I used a couple cans of spray polyurethane and in the end, the table actually turned out great. Well, I really enjoyed building this table. At some point, I will be building a bench for the breakfast nook and we are on the hunt for some old wooden chairs for the other side. There are a few things I would do differently if I was to make the table again. First, I would probably use a little harder wood for the base. Redwood is incredibly soft, even softer than some pine. Second, I would use a bandsaw. Sometimes there really is no good substitute. I have since acquired one and will be using it in future projects. And lastly, I would do tons of research on the perfect finish for the tabletop. That's the great thing about a large project like this. You can learn a lot and can apply it to all your future projects. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you missed the first part of the build, you can click the link right here. You can also follow me on social media at Make It Now channel and find me on my website at makeitnow.tv. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.